Give me the beat. It's the beat. Feel the beat. Get the beat. Give me the beat. Got the beat. It's the beat. Give me the beat. Everything in life got a beat. When you walk down the street, your feet tap to a beat. And when you speak, you speak with a beat. Get on down, get down, get way, way down. Hey, the one good thing about being down ain't no place to go but up. Ain't gonna let nothing get me down. Gonna pick myself right up and keep on keeping to the beat. Cause it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Oh, hey. It don't mean a thing All you got to do is swing, boy And it makes no difference if it's sweet or hot Just give that rhythm everything you've got Cause it don't mean a thing If it ain't got that swing, boy Help! Good evening to the West and good morning to the East. This is a good program from the Savoy. Hello everybody, this is Big Daddy, band leader, best player of the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra. And you're tuned on my YouTube channel listening to the program All That Swing, music, culture and history of the 30s and the 40s. I'll do the best I can to entertain you for the next hour while listening to either known and unusual swing songs. The main focus is on the swing craze, but we will move from the early 900 to nowadays in order to have a wider side from the roots of jazz to the evolution of swing music and dance. This particular program that we'll listen, you will listen to for 36 episodes is part of the Swing European Network Project, co-financed by the European Nation. The Italian Swing Dance Society, whom I am a board member, represents Italy in this three years project that has 13 partners from 11 different European countries and whose main focus is on the artist mobility in Europe. So here we are, here we are, Big Daddy, and we are listening the third episode of all that swing now now let's get started with the great violinist staff smith and his song use a viper 1936 come on down here let's smoke a little tea this evening huh three five three five feet long the mighty men but not too strong you get high but not for long why man you the viper. Now I'm the king of everything. You gotta get high to have that swing. Light as deep, let it be. Cause you're the viper. Now your throat gets dry and you know you're high. Everything is dandy. Truck and do the candy store. But your conk on peppermint candy. Then you know your body's thin. You don't give a darn if you don't pay rent. Sky's high, you high. Cause you're the viper. Thank you. 
you know. Staff Smith, the ladies and gentlemen, he was one of the all the jazz violinists. He was the only one who could probably have defeated most saxophonists or trumpeters in battles. So he was Ezekiah Staff Smith. He started on violin when he was seven, and uh, at 12 years old he was playing in his father's band. But then in 1924 he toured with the Alfonso Trent legendary territory band. And then he led groups in Buffalo, New York, and for a few years many bands. Then in 1936 he arrived in New York with his sextet at the Onyx Club on the 52nd Street. So he named the band the Onyx Boys and it was Staff Smith on the violin, Jonah Jones on trumpet, the one we will find with Cap Calloway. Cozy Cole on drums, he will follow Cap Calloway later. And that was a hit. Their songs were a hit. The, the well-known song is Eisenmagen. Most of them are about Mariana, like this one, use a viper. Use a viper means you're, you're smoking. And we are in 1936. We are in the middle of the second prohibition. Because in 1933, the prohibition repealed, but about drinking, about alcohol. But three years later, the USA government started a new battle against dope, but meaning about dope just marijuana and there's been a lot a lot a lot a lot uh, things and a lot of uh, things there are to say about it just one thing i want to say right now that is the only one who uh, really tried to do something against this uh, government uh, battle was fiorello la guardia the mayor of new york he made a commission just to state that all the things that the govern USA government was saying about marijuana were bullshit. All right, that's it. I said it. I said it. And now, and now, let's let's listen to a white band right now. The band is the Charlie Barnett Orchestra. Charlie Barnett was the first one, the first white music player, band leader to have a an integrated orchestra. He really was the first one. And it was a, a particular one. It was a great, a great fun. He really tried to swing like the black folks used to do. And he was able to do it. The name of the song, 1940, is Afternoon of the Mox. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, all right, Charlie Barnett, Afternoon of the Mox, 1940. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now let's let's stay in the 40s and we're going to listen to a song that was recorded in 1940 as well. And the band is the art, the, ro the Rockets of Arlan Leonard. Arlan Leonard was, along with um, J. McShun, uh, he led uh, one of the most important local bands from Kansas City, right after Count Basie and Andy Kirk left for the East Coast. Although they did not achieve, achieve the same popularity, their music was impressive. And uh, he, he began to play with, uh, in 19, uh, in, uh, when he was 17 years old, he was playing with George E. Lee Band in 1923. The same year he joined the Benny Morton Band and stayed with them until 1931. And then he formed his own band called The Rockets, along with Tom on Ice, the Sky Rockets. But then the band quit in 1934, and uh, um, and and then in uh, 1940 he formed his Rockets, and he went on touring extensively throughout the East and the Midwest. Then he broke the band in 1945 and left the music for good. The song we're gonna listen to is called "Dig It," and the singer is Myra Taylor. She she has another history as well because she's been uh, she moved to Chicago uh, from the Midwest in uh, <clears throat> sorry she moved to Chicago in 1937 and worked with Warren Baby Dudes Lonnie Johnson Roy Eldridge Lil Arding Armstrong and then she returned to Kansas City in 1940 to sing with Arlen Leonard and she's been uh, recording. Uh, some uh, rhythm and blues songs in the mid 40s and in the 50s as well but then she uh, quit she left the music business because she was tired of uh, a lot of things she didn't like and we, on the song we're going to listen to you will sure will uh, sure you will uh, uh, make a, a parallel with uh, the great uh, Ella Fitzgerald who, whom uh, Myra Taylor was um, was born on, in the same year of uh, Ella Fitzgerald, so, so they had the same age. So it's very interesting to listen to this song that is called Dig It. <laughs> Dig, dig, and you'll learn it soon. Dig, dig, dig our band. If you want to get healthy, then dig it. Dig, dig, dig our brass. Dig, dig, just dig its class. Dig, dig, dig our band. If you want to get healthy, then dig it. For the gym, jam, jump, and jive is new. Still the hidey hole will do. Open up your ears and listen to this new kind of rhythm we're presenting to you. Dig, dig, dig our ride. Dig, dig, we've hit our stride. Dig, dig, dig our band. If you want to get a yes, then dig it. Now gather round and listen to this new kind of rhythm we're presenting to you. Now don't be faithful, just do a jig. The Harlan Lennon's rhythm and you're bound to dig. That's right, fire, we'll join in too. Let's rock this number like the 400 swing.
so good until I just can't quit. Swing me up just one foot more. Now hit it, boy. One, two, three, four. Yes, yes, yes. Myra Taylor with the Harlem, La Harlem, Harlem Leonard Orchestra, or I mean the Rockets. Harlem Leonard and his Rockets, 1940. Harlem Leonard had uh, in the last recording uh, session had with him uh, Tad Dameron, that was one of the cradle who made the cradle of the bebop. And now, now let's go a little bit backward, 1937. Ladies and gentlemen, the king of swing himself, Chick Webb. The great, the great Chick Webb on drums. Strictly jive. <laughs> Thank you. 
Quite All Right, 1937, The Great Chick Web. And you're listening to All That Swing by Big Daddy. All right, I want you now to meet Miss Norma Miller. She's been a fundamental person for the developing, developing of the Lindy Hope. And she's been really the only one to link the Lindy of the late 30s to the jazz that was coming on later in the 50s and the 60s and so on. And personally, I've met her and lived with her during her last five years of life. So, since she was a good friend of Chick Webb, I want you to meet Miss Norma Miller. And I'm going to read you the introduction to the Italian edition of the book Swing, Baby Swing, that Norma Miller wrote on 2009. So this book is very important because here, if you are a dance addict, you will find all the missing pieces of the history right after the movie Elsa Popping, until nowadays, until the 80s, I mean, until the moment when Frankie Manning came to Sweden. So, known by many as a queen of swing, Norma Miller is author, choreographer, dancer, comedian and actress, an artist whose career expands in over 80 years. She was only 12 years old when the legendary Lindy Hopper Twist Mouth George introduced her to the Savoy Ballroom of Harlem, New York. And from that moment on, she never left the show business until the day she passed on the 5th of May 2019 at 100 years. She received in 2003 the National Heritage Foundation Fellowship from the National Endowments of the Arts for the role covered in the creation and preservation of the acrobatic style of swing dance known as Lindy Hop. At 99 years old, she was the icon of the Lindy Hop the original dance of the 30s, and she was the last witness of the grandeur of the widest Lindy Hoppers, the most famous dance group of the world. 80 years of artistic career, living witness of what we read on books and what she, we watch on the few video footages left. She's been sharing live shows, world tours, and TV shows with Louis Armstrong, Count Basie, Cab Calloway, Duke Ellington, Chick Webb, Ella Fitzgerald, Sammy Davis Jr., Red Fox, Richard Pryor, and many others more. From the world-renowned Savoy Ballroom, the first one to have demolished the racial barriers in the States, to Las Vegas, from Hollywood to Vietnam, in short, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to meet the history in person. And, and launched and patronized by the great Red Fox, Sanford and Son. Do you remember Sanford and Son, the TV series? She has been the first black woman to run stand-up comedies, the most important art form in the USA. She has written several books as the Encyclopedia of Black Humor, 1977, Swinging at the Savoy, 1996, Swing Baby Swing, 2009, Me and John B. Farr, 2013. And she was, before passing, she was writing the book From Lindy Hop to Hip Hop. While in 2006, it has been published by another author, the book Stomping at the Savoy, a kid's edition devoted to her life. We're going to read something more later. Now let's listen to some music and we're going to listen to something unusual. I'm talking about Lionel Hampton and his orchestra, but on the blue disc on the V-Disc, Victory Disc, 1944, on this band, in, in the band there are people, musicians like Earl Bostick, Arnett Cobb, Al Sears. So we're going to listen to Flying Home number one and Flying Home number two with a small introduction by Lionel Hampton himself. Hi, fellas. This is Lionel Hampton. The label on this V-disc says, 
flying home. And we all hope you'll be flying home soon. Final number two.
Lionel Hampton and his orchestra, 1944, ladies and gents, Hep Cats and Hep Kitten. The recording was made on a victory disc. A V-disc. Why? Because, because from 1942 till 1944, there was a musician's strike. So on August the 1st, 1942, the American Federation of Musicians, at the instigation of the Union President James C. Petrillo, began a strike against the major American record companies because of the disagreements dis 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 over royalty payments. So beginning at midnight of July the 31st, 1942, no union musician could make commercial recordings for any commercial record company. That meant that a union musician was allowed to participate on radio programs and other kinds of musical entertainment, but not in a recording session. So the 1942-1944 musician strike remains the longest strike in entertainment history. Two years, my friends, two years. And during those two years, a lot of things happened. Petrillo had long publicity maintained the recording companies should pay royalties and uh, he was elected in 1940 as a president of the american federation of musicians but when he announced that the recording band would start on july the 31st 1942 most people thought it would not happen america had just entered world war ii on december the 8th 1941 and most newspapers opposed the band by july it was clear that the band would take place and record companies began to stockpile new recordings of their most popular artists. In the first two weeks of July, these performers all recorded new material. I'm talking about Tommy Dorsey, Jimmy Dorsey, Charlie Barnett, Bing Crosby, Guy Lombard, Glenn Miller, who made his last records as a civilian band leader. Recording during the last week was a long list of performers, including Count Basie, Woody Herman, Alvino Ray, Johnny Long, Claude Turnill, Judy Garland, Glenn Gray, Benny Goodman, Kai Kaiser, Dinah Shore, Spike Jones, and Duke Ellington, among others. So, uh, several months passed before any effects of the strike were noticed. At first, the record companies opted to call, to call the union's bluff by releasing new recordings for their initial stockpiles, but the strike lasted much longer than anticipated, and eventually the supply of initial recordings was exhausted. So at the very end, at the very end, this strike effect where um, one unexpected result of the strike was the decline in popularity of the big bands. Why? Because the strike was not only the cause of its decline, but it, it hastened the shift from big bands with an accompanying accompanying vocalist to an emphasis on the vocalist with exclusion of the band in 1930s and press strike 40s big bands dominated popular music immediately following the strike vocalists began to dominate popular music and another effect of the strike was the lack of recordings of early bebop so This strike has been very, very important. Anyway, let's go listen to my band, the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra, from the record Savoy Heyday. Let's listen to Modern Swing. <laughs>
All right, all right, the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra, Martin Swing from the Count Basie Orchestra. A great song. Every time I play this song, I say thank you, Mr. Count Basie, for this song. Okay, now let's move to a great territory band, a great swinging band of the, of the mid-30s and over. I'm talking about Andy Kirk and his 12 Clouds of Joy. So Andy Kirk was, uh, uh, he came from Kansas City. He came from Kansas City and he played with uh, Terrence Holder's Dark Clouds of Joy in Dallas. And then he took the band and that became the Andy Kirk 12 Clouds of Joy. And he has had as a pianist the great Mary Lou Williams. And... Uh, It was a major, this was a major Kansas City based orchestra and one of the first to catch on beyond its Missouri base. So now let's listen to a 1936 great swing song that it's called, it's called Wednesday Night Hop. <laughs> Kirk and his 12 Clouds of Joy, Wesley Night Hop. Great song, 1936, great swing. Wow, great, great, really great. And I mean it. So now let's move to Italy, where we're going to listen a song from 1942 that was written by Danzi. Danzi was a great writer, songwriter, and he really made a lot of hits during that period, that bad period for Italy, of course. Because we were, we had a war in uh, in our house, unfortunately, and uh, that make me think about the war that we have 
on the other side of the Adriatic Sea where I live. Poor people, I really hope everybody can uh, get home safe. And uh, okay, the name of the song is Voglio vivere così. That means I want to live this way. Which way? With the sun kissing my front, with the sun in front of me. It's just something like Osolimio could be, but that's a way of living. Happy, strong, facing the sun and smiling. Christian De Sica, Voglio Vivere Così. Voglio vivere così, col sole in fronte e felice canto, beatamente. Voglio vivere e godere l'aria del monte, perché questo incanto non costa niente ah ah oggi amo attentamente quel ruscello impertinente menestrello dell'amore ah ah il fiorire delle piante tiene festa questo po' sai perché voglio vivere così mm. col sole in fronte e felice canto Canto per me Ardentemente quel ruscello impertinente menestrello dell'amore. Ah ah! Il fiorire delle piante tiene in festa questo po'. Sai perché? Voglio vivere così, e eh sì, e eh già, col sole in fronte. E felice canto, canto per me. Vivere così, mm, col sole in fronte, e felice canto, beatamente. Mm, voglio vivere con te, l'aria del monte, perché questo incanto non costa niente. Oggi amo ardentemente quel ruscello impertinente menestrello dell'amore. Ah ah! Il fiorire delle piante tiene in festa questo po', sai perché? Voglio vivere così, col sole in fronte e felice canto, canto per me. the great Christian De Sica in Voglio Vivere Così 1942 song a uh, uh, rendition, new rendition of the song alright ladies and gentlemen you have been listening to the program All That Swing by Big Daddy Music, Culture and History in the 30s and the 40s this particular program that you will uh, listen for 36 episodes is part of the Swing European Network Project co-financed by the European Union. So today you're listening to the third episode and you will find the other each 15 days or each month. But you follow me on the channel, on my YouTube channel. And uh, now let's uh, go over before uh, saying farewell, reading the introduction to the book, to the Italian version edition, Italian English edition of Swing Baby Swing that was out on 2018 and let's meet Norma Miller. 
She has been among the stars of the movie Captiva Island, 1995, by John B. Farr, with Ernest Borgnine and Bill Cobbs. In 2015, John B. Farr has produced a fabulous documentary about her life, Queen of Swing. On January 2016, Norma Miller is back on stage for a 90 minutes one-man stand-up, Norma Miller Unplugged, broadcasted on the American TV's circuit. She has written several songs and lyrics dedicated to jazz, musicians and dancers, recorded in 2016 together with Italian Billy Bros Swing Orchestra and printed on the CD A Swinging Love Fest. That I'm gonna show you, this one here, Swinging Love Fest. In 2017, she's been touring Europe with the Billy Bros Swing Orchestra, performing in Italy, Slovenia and Denmark. While printing this second edition on the, of the book, she's touring again and recording a new CD, gathering always stratospheric consensus and mesmerizing the public with her vitality. So we are in 2018, one year before she passed. Furthermore, Queen of Swing has planned a show to be performed in Broadway with the best swing dance and music performers from all over the world will be featured by her personal choice. That was her final dream. Unlikely, we couldn't do it. The Italian Swing Dance Academy has chosen to translate the book Swing Baby Swing, written by Norma Miller, with the contribution of other protagonists of the dance scene in 2009, because they believe it is an important and very useful, useful document to understand the evolution of Lindy Hop from late 20s to the 50s, the comeback in the 80s and the following development in Europe. An important book that will widen horizons and fill different voids that inevitably occurred for lack of documents of the history of the Lindy Hop. The final and tenth chapter has been added in the second edition of the Italian version as a testimony of the imp important presence and valuable work of Norma Miller in Italy from 2014 until 2019. The translation as well as the original text has been added with some notes in order to make it more understandable to every reader, considering that Norma Miller has, alway, has already and broadly written about the, her own artistic career in the autobiographic swinging at the Savoy. We finally wish to have done a pleasant and useful job, both for new incomers and swing nerds. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much, and we'll see you, we'll be seeing you on the fourth episode of All That Swing. And now let's listen to Miss Norma Miller and her song dedicated to Louis Armstrong. They call him Louis. Hep, hep. <laughs> They call him Louie, Louie is what he's called, but he's props to me. He had a style and a smile and a horn that reached high C. He was ambassador of jazz, he was a stone gas. They call him Louie, Louie is what he's called, but he's props to me. The music go round and round And it came out sweet And he gave it to the world And the world began to swing Cause it don't mean a thing If it ain't got that swing They call him Louie Louie's what he's old But he's pops to me Hey, the cat could really scat Pops knew where it was at He took the sound of New Orleans Up to the Great White Way That was Louis Armstrong And he did it his way And whether you call him Sanchmo Or Louis, he's still the top they call him Louie, Louie's what he's called, but he's pops to me. Go round 
would swing And he gave it to the world And the world began to sing Cause it don't mean a thing If it ain't got that swing They call him Louis Louis, Louis, Louis. But he's pops to me Hey, the cat could really scat Pops knew where it was at They took the sound of New Orleans Up to the great white way That was Louis Armstrong And he did it his way Whether you call him Satchmo Or Louis They call him Louis, 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 but he's pops to me. He's pops to me. 